In its brief public life, the new 6th Street Viaduct has hosted a haircut, a podcast and a sculptural arrangement of lowriders, one of those remarkable visual manifestations of the L. A sublime. There have also been street takeovers, drag races and a crash that sent a car careening into a bicycle lane. Barely three weeks old, the viaduct has done a lot of living. So much that, over one week last month, the LAPD shut the bridge down four nights out of five and the Bureau of Engineering installed raised domes in the middle of the street to discourage drivers from doing donuts. All of this has had the result of turning this piece of urban infrastructure into a media star, an increasingly infamous one. Shutdowns have generated national coverage. Footage of people climbing arches and cars doing burnouts get repeat earrings on social media and the evening news. On a recent episode of his podcast, Adam Carolla bemoaned, we're incapable of opening a bridge without it being overrun by lawless hooligans. It's a narrative that risks playing into conservative tropes about out-of-control cities and need law and order. And it ignores the fact that news structures have a habit of generating media stunts. In 2008, shortly after the New York Times opened its Renzo Piano Design Tower in Manhattan, climbers made headlines by scaling it. In May, a 22-year-old man scaled San Francisco's 61-story Salesforce Tower. And don't forget Philippe Petty, who crossed the vertigo-inducing chasm between New York City's Twin Towers on a tightrope in 1974. Yes, he got arrested. He also got a charming documentary. For more than a week, I have been visiting the 6th Street Bridge almost daily for periods of an hour or more at a time, following up on a story about its design. I profiled Michael Maltesen, whose firm designed the bridge in collaboration with HNTV and AC Martin Partners. I wanted to observe the ways its myriad parts are actually being used, 